Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how to resolve the remote procedure call failed error when you're trying to open up Windows Store apps. So if you receive this error, it could definitely be at fault due to the registry. But there is one thing I want to try before we really get too complex into this tutorial. And that would be to make sure that the service is running. So if you want to open up the start menu and type in services, should be listed as a desktop app on Windows 10. Early versions should not say desktop app. So again, just left click on that. And just give it a moment. So now in our services window, if you have to expand the view a little bit, that's fine. We want to go down until we get to remote procedure call. Right here. And you want to make sure that this service is running and automatic. If it is not, you want to right click on it and start the service. And you want to make sure it's automatic. So if you wanted to even double click on the service, you could set it to startup type automatic if you had to and then set the service to running and hopefully that would solve your issue if that was as simple as it was however if it's more complex we're going to move on to the next step here and that would be to close out of our services window head back to the start menu or actually we're going to right click on the start button and left click on run from this menu that appears you could have also gotten this run dialog window through the start menu as well, but I feel it's a little bit quicker to right click on the start button. So we're going to type in reg, R-E-G, E-D-T, 32, dot E-X-E, and then either hit enter on your keyboard or click on OK. So I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard here. So if you receive a user account control window, you want to select yes. This will open up the register editor utility. So just be patient again. And now we're going to navigate over on the left side here to H key current user. So either double click on the folder to open up the subfolders or click on the little arrow to the left side of it. And then we're going to go underneath software. And then we're going to double click on classes. Again, I don't want to go too fast here. I know you guys can definitely pause the video if you want to, but I always hate it when people fly through something like this. So let's just take our time. I don't think there should be a major rush to get this done. So anyway, once you open up classes, you want to go down to local settings. You have to scroll through all this. And you can see if you're not paying attention, you'll actually go past it. So again, now we're going to open up local settings. And then we're going to go underneath software again. And then there should be a Microsoft folder here. Again, double click on it. And then there should be a Windows folder. Double click on that. And then current version. Double click on that as well. App container. Double click on that. You want to double click on storage as well. So now what we're going to be looking for is something that begins with WinStore, so W-I-N. And if we do not have it, then that is a clear problem here. So it should say WinStore underscore, and then it should say CW, so on and so forth. And it would normally be right underneath this Windows IEAC001. So if you get to the bottom of this list and you do not see one here, we have to create a subkey in order to proceed with this tutorial. So if you do not see one, we're going to go back up to the top where it says storage. So the last one that we expanded, right click on it, left click on new, and then once you've left click on new, you want to left click on key at the top. So now for this key, we're going to name it something right here. I'm going to actually put this in the description of this video. So like I said, we're going to rename the key. So that should be about it for that. And you don't have to change anything on the right side here. All of that's fine. 
So at this point we can close out of the registry editor. We're going to open up a website and I've already opened it up in the taskbar here. We're going to have to download the set ACL tool which is basically a Windows manipulation tool and please keep in mind we're going to need to have something that's going to unzip or uncompress this file because it is in compressed file format. So near the bottom of this page that I'm going to put a link in the description of this video for, there should be something that says set ACL. You want to left click for the administrator's area that says download the exe version of set ACL and for 32 and 64 bit windows. The version number might change when you're watching this video so it shouldn't make that big of a deal so you want to open that up. So you want to agree to the terms. This is a safe file. You do not have to worry about it. It's not going to do anything to your computer that's not desired. So once you are prompted if you want to download it, you want to save it. And we can see it is in a zip file format. So we're going to open the folder here. So I'm going to minimize out of our web browser. We don't need it anymore. And I'm going to open up this compressed folder here. We see there's an executable version. And open up the folder again. And we see there's this 32 bit N64 bit version of this file. If you do not know what version of Windows you are running, this is very important that you do this right. If you don't do this right, the rest of this tutorial is basically pointless for you. If you open up the start menu and type in system, it should open up control panel. You want to left click on that. It should say right above control panel on Windows 7 and Windows 8, it should just say system. You want to open that up. And it should say right here underneath system type what version of the operating system you're running. In most cases, the operating system and the processor will be the same. However, since I'm in a virtual environment, it's not unsurprising that I'm running a 64-bit base processor and a 32-bit version of Windows. So just you want to go off of what your operating system is showing here. So I'm going to open up the 32-bit one. And we see there's an application in here. Now, we're not actually going to run this application. We're going to just drag it onto our desktop somewhere or anywhere safe. I'm going to close out of this folder. And now I'm going to open up File Explorer. You can either access it by going through the Start menu and type in File Explorer. Or if you have a File Explorer icon on your taskbar, you can open that up. And we're going to navigate over to the System32 folder. So you're going to have to make sure that your hidden folder view is enabled. So if it's not, go up to the View tab at the top, left click on the Options button at the far right side. The middle tab should say View. Underneath Hidden Files and Folders, left click on the circle that says Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drivers if it's not already selected. And then click on Apply and OK because otherwise we will not have access to the System32 folder. So once you've done that, we're going to go into this PC, local disk. Now the C drive happens to be my system root drive. It might be different for you guys. Most people it should be the C drive. So just go off of that. Whichever your main hard drive is will typically be the system root drive. But once you've done doing that, we're going to go underneath Windows. And then scroll down until we get to system 32. Keep in mind, if your view is not showing hidden files and folders, you will not see this System32 folder. So once you've done that, all you have to do is just take this application that we moved to our desktop or any safe location and drop it in this folder. So I'm actually just going to go up to the top, the path name, and I'm going to move to System32. Please know you're going to need to provide administrator rights to move this folder. Click Continue shouldn't take very long. So once you're done doing that, we're going to close out of our System32 folder that we just created. And we're going to right click on the Start button again. Left click on Command Prompt and in parentheses Admin from this menu. If you receive a User Account Control window, you want to select Yes. It's very important you run this as an administrator. 
So now I actually do have another command, or I believe it's actually our first command we're running today, believe it or not. And I'm going to put it in the description of the video as well. I'll probably label this as the command prompt command or run this in the command prompt or something along those lines. So I'm just going to paste this into the command prompt, either right click in the command prompt up at the top, click edit, and then paste. Or you actually could select inside the command prompt and do control V, whichever one you prefer. So like I just showed, right click at the top, click the edit, left clicking it, and then left click paste. Once you've done running that, it'll say that the set ACL finished successfully, or at least it should. At this point, I'd recommend closing out of any active programs or windows you have open, and then restart your computer and hopefully the problem has been resolved. So I know this tutorial is a little bit long and there's a lot of places that you could get tripped up on, so I hope I explained it and went through it as thoroughly as I could. So as always, thank you for watching. Like I said, restart the computer and hopefully your problem with the remote procedure call has been resolved. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Goodbye.